Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so excited today to be joined by the wonderful Connie Britton to talk all about the HBO Max series, The White Lotus. And I wanted to start by talking a little bit about your inroads to the character with the writing, because you'd previously um, done the film Beatrice at Dinner, which Mike White, the creator of The White Lotus, had written the script for, which also had this really great, dry, subversive social satire aspect to it. And so I was interested in how that really helped you find the inroad of how you were going to develop and play this character particularly with the fact that you know the the comedy comes from the dryness and the not acknowledging things and everything being very truthful to this character throughout the season um, and so how did kind of being in a place where you're very at home with his writing and kind of knew that element of it help you develop who Nicole was going to be for the series um yeah well first of all I mean it was really because I, I've been such a huge fan of Mike's for his whole career. <laughs> and so, um, and, you know, I loved working with him on Beatrice at dinner and I, it's an, it's, I love your question because it re, it makes me realize like, Oh, I, yeah, I feel like in a way we sort of started working on a woman like this in Beatrice at dinner. Um, you know, and, and one of the things that I think Mike does so well in terms of creating those kind of subversive stories is um, all of the characters to some degree are well-intentioned, like, or believe that they're well-intentioned. And so in the case of the character that I played in Beatrice at dinner, you know, um, she really was just trying to make everybody happy and be a good hostess and like, you know, uh, just has a blind spot for her privilege and priorities, not in the right place, all of those things, you know? And so it, it's, it almost in, in a way, white Lotus felt like a continuation or like a deeper exploration of what that's about because, and I, and I think of course felt particularly relevant um, for White Lotus because of where we are culturally right now, you know, I think to really like drill down on the psychological and emotional of people who are just living in this entitlement and just can't, are in such denial about that and about who they are in the world and what their expectations are in the world. And yet, all the time, they really are well-intentioned. Like that that's the thing. Like they really, they really are trying to do the best they can, you know? And so it's really fun to play around with. And this is just, I think one of the things that Mike does so brilliantly to play around with those, like those balances and sort of how kind of we really lose sight of ourselves because of our own good intentions, you know? Um, so yeah. There's also, a, there's also a lot of really interesting aspects on her emotional plane that clearly come from the day-to-day -day of, of kind of running a tech company and what that means and what it's probably meant for her to reach that trajectory in her career and the space that she has. Um, you know, when we see her setting up a Zoom call and she makes mention of anxiety and she's moving furniture around, it's that's her way of trying to control all of the pressures on a vacation where she can't even step away from you know, her work and email for a few hours, she's still always tied to it. Um, and so how did you look at the undercurrent of, of everything emotionally that's existing in her as a character on vacation, the anxieties, the pressure, the stresses, you know, things that people say as criticisms that really hit to her, which were a development of the day to day and the career trajectory that she's been through over the last few years? Well, I thought it was really, really, really interesting to explore that. I mean, on, on several levels, you know, I mean, first of all, the career trajectory, it's like, she is an example of a woman who has broken through the glass ceiling and has, you know, done the, in some ways, the unthinkable, which is she has really become a major head of a major organization. Um, in a man's world. And, um, so on paper, that's the goal, right? That's like, that's the thing. And she's so, she's so it's, she's so empowered and all of that, you know, and, um, so successful. Um, but 
but then so but then what what Mike does and made made it possible to do is to like get underneath that and like realize the limitations of that very much because those were the goals for her. You know, it's like, if you let that be your goal, like, and it's just like, that's leading you and leading you and leading you. Then every, every time there's a success, you're being, you're being vindicated and validated. You know what I mean? And so she sort of sits in this lofty place um, with all the success and then still experiences this lack of control in her life, major anxiety, um, feeling of complete disappointment, um, complete chaos with her family and her marriage. And it's like the, to, to like break down, like, and that, by the way, I think this is very real for people, you know, is we have, we we're, we're raised to believe in a certain set of values or a certain, you know, thing that we need to accomplish. And then you work and you work and you work and that's the goal and that's the standard. And then suddenly you realize I, the, the, the disconnect with how difficult it is and how unrewarding it is and how, you know what I mean? It's like, that's very real. And, um, you know, on top of that to incorporate sort of the blind spots of like privilege and, um, cultural hierarchy, you know, and even being a woman and kind of making her man feel less than, you know, but that's not really her fault. It's because of like the cultural ideas that, that they both hold about who they're supposed to be to each other, you know? And so it's like, again, it just goes back to Mike's brilliant writing, making the space to explore all of those little intricacies of cultural realities, you know, and we're all, all of us just to some degree at the mercy of those of those cultural ideas. I also love the fact that that with his writing and with your performance, even though we're not seeing her in the workplace and seeing how she operates, we get a sense of certain ways that she's kind of able to turn certain things on or switch and, and kind of adjust to different rooms that she walks into. Like if we take the scene where the family are about to go out on the boat and then she gets into an argument with her husband and is storming off, she's still pausing to kind of very gallantly be like, thank you so much to the guy who's working and helping her off and on the boat. And so how did you kind of find those little beats and those instances of this is probably how she operates in the world of work. And so even though she's on vacation, these are the places where it's still going to seep out in her behavior. Well, yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, I think that was just part of the exploration of who the character was, you know, it's just like, I, at, at baseline, I sort of had to like, understand how she functions in the world. And so it's like, I really was exploring what that, where, what her baseline is. And then, and then all of the things in the script, all of the things that we watch her go through are all of these conflicts that come into play in the face of who she's, who she thinks she is, you know what I mean? And who she's created herself to be. And um, that is very, she has very carefully, crafted and curated that. And, um, that's the part she knows, but it's all the difficulties with her children and her husband and feeling like she's not appreciated in the culture. And, you know, like she is among all the other women out there who are feminists, who are still downtrodden, you know, and all, all of that, you know, um, I mean, she's very karen in a way, isn't she? Um, so it's, it's fun to like, fought, it was fun to play all of the things that were coming at her as like dismantling this kind of like baseline that she has well established in her life, you know? 
and and the scene which is the confrontation with Alexandra Daddario's character is a great example of where we really get to see all of those different things that you were just talking about with all of the different pressures coming from different places really just come to the surface in one, um, you know, and kind of going back and watching that scene, there's so many different beats to what you're doing with your performance. There's the kind of, you know, I don't really want this person to sit down and interrupt me, but everything's fine. Take a seat. Okay. Now I'm being complimented. So it's validating my success. And then the shift to, you know, something that's clearly very sensitive that really hit a nerve with her. And again, going back to those pressures and anxieties. And was that a scene where you kind of, did you go into that scene knowing the different beats that you wanted to hit and the different internal aspects that that was going to bring up for your character? Or was a lot of that finding that in your performance alongside Alexandra once you came to filming it on the day? Yeah, I mean, it was really kind of both, you know, I always, I always want to leave space in any scene that I do to discover it and to like, just let like really discover, especially those, those like very subtle minuscule moments that like thread into a different, to a shift in, you know, thinking. Um, and that scene in particular, there were so, it was, a, it was actually a really long scene and there were so many different levels to it. Um, and it, goes on such a journey. And, um, it was one of the first scenes that it might've been the first scene I shot. And it was a really, that was a hard day. Like I remember that day of shooting and we were, I, I was feeling like, I don't know if we're getting it. And I think Mike was even like, I'm not sure, like if we're getting everything we want to get to. And it, but what's interesting and this, I always find this to be true too. in the work that I'm doing, it's like, it was feeling unsettling, you know, it was feeling when we were shooting it, it was feeling like, because there was so much that we were trying to, um, weave together. Um, um, there was, there was like this fear that was kind of building and this like unknown and questioning and self-doubt. And I think even for Mike too, and maybe even for Alex, I actually never really talked about this with her, but um, we even were like going to try to reshoot the scene, which is so funny because in retrospect now, it's like, I think that that scene actually has been such an impactful one for people. But I think that those elements of the scene became very enlivened. You know, I think that they were in happening in real time, like all of the variations of, you know, ultimately she wants to be, she likes the idea that somebody is complimenting her, you know, and she's not getting any of that from her family. And she's, she's, she's not providing it for herself because she's ex experiencing her own kind of self-hatred and self-doubt and all those things. And then like to have it tumble, you know, um, so I think it was really, that was such an, just for me, and this is what I always love is, you know, when I have a new experience as an actor and when I'm shooting a scene and like the kind of like way we found all the different levels of that scene, even in the sense of, even in the course of like, not knowing, not knowing if we were doing it right. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, that's that's so interesting, especially hearing that that was one of the first scenes that you filmed in. And in talking about her family a little bit, I wanted to talk about the relationship with her daughter, because I love the fact that, you know, Sydney Sweeney is playing this really brilliantly acerbic character who kind of shrinks every person with just a look, let alone the words that she says. And watching the two of you go toe to toe is always so fascinating in scenes because there's a lot of moments where Nicole just kind of dismisses and just doesn't even acknowledge and doesn't even step into the game of, of what her daughter's playing. And then there's moments where certain things do needle her and she kind of feels a need to get into it and respond. Um, and so I was interested in how you how you kind of approach that, that dynamic and the relationship between the two of them, because she's also holding her daughter to a different standard than she is her son in a lot of ways as well. Yeah. Well, it's funny because I think that the relationship um, with Sydney's character was so, it was fun to play because I think on a lot of levels, she as her daughter 
as Nicole's daughter is so horrifying. And yet at the same time, like she recognizes pieces of herself in her and wants desperately to have her have the same values as she has. And, and like, and, you know, she's Sydney's character knows that. And so she's like, I am not going to hold any of your values true. And so it's, that was really fun. And also slightly as, as my, as a mother myself, like to actually really play sort of that, how like anything that was Nicole's value was totally negated by her. Um, and the pain of that, like the pain of that, and yet having to come back a day in and day out every minute and still be mother and still like love her and still want so badly to have her, you know, share in these values that, you know, it, it was really interesting to play that and to like have that kind of like undercurrent of just pain and yet constantly trying to overcome it, you know? And when it comes to the dynamic with the family, um, you know, I'm not sure if this was just kind of a logistical choice, but I was interested in, in what it told you with the fact that this is a woman who has the financial means to have adjoining rooms where everybody can have their own bedroom and have their own space, but yet they're staying in a suite that only has one bedroom and they've got three kids with them because they've got Paula as well to the point where her son ends up sleeping in the closet. And for you, was, was that kind of just very much this idea of like trying to keep everybody physically very close to kind of create that dynamic that she's chasing after on this holiday? You know what? I will be really honest. I never even thought about it. <laughs> it's that was a funny thing. I don't even know if Mike thought about it because we, after the show came out, like I remember Mike actually texted me like some commentary that somebody said, like, if she was so rich and so successful, why would she be in a one bedroom suite? You know, whatever. And Mike and I were like, both like, what? And I don't, I, I honestly, maybe he, maybe he had, there was a conscious choice there in my mind. I mean, that suite was so palatial and so beautiful. And, um, you know, I kind of just always assumed that this was like one of the, one of the nicest suites at the hotel and that's what they got, you know? And it's like, <laughs> so it's really, that's really funny because I, um, I, I truly never looked at it. Like this was a choice, like, oh, we could have had a two bedroom. We're just going to have a one bedroom, you know, but listen, if it was maybe even though she's made all this money, like she's still the, the primary breadwinner, and maybe they didn't, maybe she was, maybe she is very like tight with her budgets. And she's like, we can all share this one bedroom and make it work. And it'll be, it'll be fine. Cause we're a happy family, you know? And, you know, they obviously have Paula, her daughter's friend, who's on vacation with them as well, who has every ailment in the world known to man and every allergy. And it's, it's just so clear that so much of it, it's not real and it's just projections. Um, and your character is the person who just like, again, just doesn't have time to engage in that. Was that coming from a place of, you know, I have certain standards and I'm just not going to allow you to engage in this sort of tomfoolery or for you, where did that kind of refusal to engage in that side of things come from? Well, yeah, I think, I think that was, you know, I actually loved, loved that dynamic because I, it kind of gave her, that was, those were some of the, 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 the few moments where we saw her just being like, uh, I'm not going to deal with you, you know? Um, but yet also she still has her mom nurturing thing that she, you know, that she still would engage with her in that way. But um, I really, I, I thought it was just a fun, a fun aspect to be, to be kind of like, oh, for God's sakes, you know, and like, she's so, I, I, my sense is Nicole would never, you know, she's, she's so strong. She's so controlled. She's so put together that that is the antithesis of how she has lived her life. That's the antithesis of who she was when she was that age. So I think for her, it's just kind of like, Oh my God, you know, so funny. And it's funny because there's that line, oh, I can't remember the exact line, but it was basically like, oh, who's her physician? 
Lena Dunham's doctor, something like that. And I remember, and this was another one uh, that, that Lena reached out to me. And I think she emailed me and, and Mike separately, but was just like, best moment of my life when you said that. She, like, she loved it. It was so funny. I was like, yes. <laughs> Amazing. And then, you know, talking about the marriage a little bit with Steve Zahn playing Mark, her husband, um, you know, a, a lot of what comes to the surface for the two of them on the vacation stems from him telling their son about his previous infidelity and that being something that, you know, she even acknowledges, like, this is something that I don't want to talk about. I don't want to address. I kind of never do. It's, you know, it's very clear. This is something for a long time ever since it happened. I've, I've decided to move on and I just push this beneath the surface, but knowing that that was kind of always a prevalent part of their relationship, even before it's revealed narratively for the audience, for you, what were some of the spaces that that built into the dynamic of the marriage that you and Steve created on screen and some of the moments that we saw? Well, I think that that was a really great way of demonstrating the ease with which these people can choose to live in denial. and there's the, there's sort of a luxury in that. And I think, um, in her case, like she was expecting that as kind of a, an understanding between the two of them, you know, that's like, you owe me this and we are going to pretend that it didn't happen. And when he, because you know, suddenly everything for him is, and it, you know, my sense is he was probably fine living that way. And then of course, everything for him is shaken to the core because he thinks that maybe he's going to die, you know? And, um, and so then he breaks the agreement that they have with that. And, um, and it's interesting because in the way that scene plays, he actually kind of comes across as the bad guy because he told the truth and their pact was that the truth would not be told. The truth would not be acknowledged. And so I just think, again, the layers of that are very, it's, it's, and again, tribute to Mike, but like, I just think the, the layers of that are really an interesting way of showing the kind of decadence of just living in denial and allowing yourself to just pretend that bad things don't happen, you know? Um, and then what happens when you're forced to reckon with that, you know? Um, so yeah, that was a really interesting, I thought that was such an interesting element to the whole, to their relationship, but also to the bigger picture of the themes of the show. And because the the moment in the story where the robbery from the safe occurs, um, you know, and is interrupted by them coming back from their argument on the boat. And again, you know, there's there's so many different dynamics at play and, and it's such a pivotal moment for those two characters because it really puts them on a different path from that moment when yeah. he comes in and pushes the guy out the way. Um, you know, again, kind of like was the was the contextualization and the script and the character like really there to give you those different beats, or you know, was that again also another scene where it was a little bit trying some different things on the day? Well, with that, that was actually pretty choreographed. That scene, um, you know, because there was a lot of physical activity in it. Um, so we were pretty we were pretty specific about what the beats of that were going to be and um and how that was going to play out. But that being said, I that was actually one of my favorite days of shooting oddly because there was such like the adrenaline was so high and um that's not my that's not my comfort zone like doing sort of physical uh stuff like that is not where i and doing stunts and you know getting hit and dragged and all that stuff it's like not my forte and so but it was fun like it was it it created this element of discovery every time we did it and um and so as is true with all the scenes really and and what you know, i always hope for is we kind of in the, in the sort of energy of the adrenaline and like actually playing it out, we, we really discovered um, 
kind of how that was bringing Steve and I together. You know what I mean? And, or Mark and Mark and Nicole together. And so um, that was really fun. It was really fun. And because with Mark and Nicole, we do have this, you know, this kind of reconnection that happens to them on this vacation, which is kind of what they're after at the beginning, but just isn't happening in the way that they planned. Knowing that arc of where you were building the relationship towards it, the end, um, you know, what what was that pathway of, of kind of finding those different beats and those moments and those little things that kind of pull them apart a little bit, but then maybe bring them back together a little bit more. And even just little moments that show us that connection that that has always been part of their relationship. They don't come away new people. Like even when he's on the phone trying to get, you know, waiting for his doctor who then gets disconnected with test results. And she's like, you know, she creates a calming space and it's like, just breathe. Everything's going to be okay. And so we do get to see that intimate connection in other instances as well. Yeah. No, I, it's funny because as you say that, um, these are such good questions, by the way, like, I'm really like thinking, getting a chance to think about all this in different ways, but, um, you know, I, I never felt like, you know, even though we have that moment at the end where you really see them kind of connected for the first time and, um, you know, you feel like they, it's almost like they broke through something, um, and, th- and I, which I buy, I believe that, and I get that. And again, I think that there is something about like this sort of adrenalized experience that is like very heightened and scary or whatever, just heightened that can really like connect people. But what I also love is, and it felt very clear to me is that at the end, they're still very much the same people and they have now had this experience together. And so they may see each other a little bit differently. They may have learned a little bit, you know, Um, but much like the people, you know, people in the world who are maybe starting to look at their own privilege and their own kind of, um, you know, the, 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 uh, luxury of deny being in denial or, you know, seeing life through whatever lens you would like to see it because it serves you and the culture serves you. I think that there is like, there are these moments of breakthrough, but I think what, for me, what I take away from the experience with Nicole and Mark at the end of white Lotus is real change takes a long time. It takes a lot of work. It takes a good hard look. And like, it's going to happen in small increments in most cases. And so I feel like what we were able to explore in that story was like this incremental, like shift that may have been a shift forward for them, but there's still like a much bigger picture. You know what I mean? Like they are, they're, they've still got a long way to go. There's, that's a lot to dismantle for them, but, um, but there, you know, we got to see, you know, we got to see in sort of their story, the ways in which we can chip away at our own cultural understanding, you know? Well, it is such, such an incredibly intricate, complex and and nuanced performance that you've given throughout the series. So it's been really, really a pleasure to talk about it and to hear all these details. Thank you so much, Connie. Really appreciate your time today. Oh, thank you. It's lovely to talk to you. I loved all your questions. So thank you.